friends, it's Marna Ross. I'm in my kitchen again for yet one more edition of In the Kitchen with Marna Ross and Pampered Chef. So it is a Wednesday night. It is no special night. You know, I don't have a party tonight. I'm not cooking for somebody else tonight. Tomorrow night, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, those are all party nights. But tonight is just Jim and I home. And um, lots of times I make a main dish for you. I show you usually a healthy cooking dish. So what would you say to something so decadent, so delicious, so outrageous that um, you will be running to the store to get the ingredients? Sound good? All right. So before we get started, let's just cover a couple of things. Um, if you wouldn't mind, you know, I always ask you at the beginning, if you wouldn't mind sharing my video to your timeline, um, that has really helped my, um, my brand get out there. My website gets hit a lot, you know, people see the video on your line, but then also you'll get to keep the recipe and it'll be in your feed so you can see it later. So just to tell you how um, crazy my pantry is, I had every single ingredient I need for this cake already in my kitchen. I didn't even have to go to the store for it. So I'm really a reformed chocoholic. I don't know if you know, but I love dessert. I always have. And I've really changed my ways lately. But I thought tonight was the night to just kind of break the rules. And who do I have to thank for this is my friend Paula Brackner, who lives in Wisconsin. She told me about this cake. And you know how when somebody just tells you about a recipe and you just go, oh my gosh, I've just got to try this? That's how it was with this cake. So Paula, curses woman, curses. But hey, it's good for all of us. We're going to see this chocolate uh, pecan praline poke cake and it's all done in the micro so let's get started we're gonna start with a rock crack and this is absolutely the must buy this is the queen of my kitchen especially this size this is the four quart Dutch oven um, we've got a piece of stoneware that's been wrapped in a stone product that makes it so that it can be used on all surfaces in your kitchen your stovetop your microwave your oven out on the grill under the broiler and then um, when you're lucky enough to get the base, there's an electric base you can put this in and it turns it into a, a crock pot or a warming unit. It's fabulous. Um, this we'll talk about a little bit at the end, but we're going to get using it for a cake. So it comes with a glass lid. And so I'm all about time saving. As you well know, um, anytime I cook, it's got to be fast, it's got to be quick. So I'd like to share a few tri tricks and tips that will make you get in and out of the kitchen faster. So first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to mix up the cake mix right in the cooking vessel. Okay? There is no need for me to get out a bowl, even though I'd love to show you a bowl. There's no need for me to get out a bowl, get that all dirty, um, when I can mix this up right in the pan. Why? Because this is so nonstick that after I bake it, you know, or before I bake it, I don't even need to spray this. Totally nonstick. Okay, another time saving trick the recipe calls for a cup of water, a third cup of oil, and three eggs. So normally I'd have all that sitting around. You know what I do, friends, is I get it all put together in one measuring cup, and this is our um, measure all cup. So the eggs, the oil, the water are all in there. And I just dump. And then, you know, I have not used a hand mixer in years because I use this whisk. You see how the tight tines are on there? That is when you want to get lumps out of something like cake mix. You want a whisk that has nice tight tines or blades on it. If you get a whisk that has nice big, it's almost like a balloon whisk, that's going to be great for incorporating air into recipes. Mostly what I want to do is get the lump out. So I want this kind of whisk. Um, it's a restaurant quality whisk. It has a handle that's solid. This is stainless steel. If you've ever had a whisk of old, they sometimes were made out of just plain old steel and they would rust or the handle would get all rusty. Not this one. So I just made the cake mix exactly as the directions call. Now I was out doing a party last night in Carol. And hello, host Elaine, if you're watching. She did a fun party and we made a chocolate lava cake there. And I have made that lava cake more times than I care to think of. I bet you I have made it 2,000 times in my 20 years with Pampered Chef. Because it's just a perennial hit. It's, everyone who tastes it loves it. So this recipe I thought could be a little alternative to that. 
So one of the hardest parts of these, this job is not licking this. Put that in the sink. So we're going to put the cover on and we're going to microwave this for nine minutes. And on high, and you need a turntable in the microwave, friends, to really uh, have this to have this be easy to do. Let's say you don't have a turntable. Well, let's just say you should get a different microwave, but that's another story. If you don't have a turntable, you would have to go in and every two, two and a half minutes, you would have to turn that a quarter turn. Keep rotating it around, because there's hot spots in your microwave and it will bake unevenly. So um, uh, one, a microwave with a turntable is definitely gonna be best. All right, and just so you remember, this measure all cup does liquids one way, and then you flip it over and it does sticky gooey. Things, let me just shake out the excess oil and water, but things like peanut butter, shortening, uh, caro syrup, sour cream, mayonnaise, and you just push it out like that. It's really a great product. We have sold that product for about 20 years, at least, probably more than that. So while that's cooking, we're going to prepare the toppings for this. But before I do that, I always take this when I use a rock crock just to show it. And this was uh, called, or is called, um, a boil over no more. It's a lid that you can put on anything uh, pot wise. You can put it on the rock crock. You could put it on a Dutch oven. You could put it on any pot you have. This one is the 10 inch size and I also have a 12. But what does this do? Friends, it keeps anything you put it on from boiling over. Um, you know how it is. You put potatoes or pasta or a soup or something on the stovetop, and the minute you walk away, you're trying to bring it to a boil or whatever, the minute you walk away, it boils over. So if you would replace your lid with this, I promise you nothing can boil over. All of the ingredients will bubble up in the middle here and collect on the top. We've tried to get it to boil over, absolutely impossible. I sell tons and tons of boil over no more lids. This is the small, and I find that most customers um, can do it with the small. The next one up is gonna be 12 inches because your middle has to be able to fit um, and be in the middle of a bowl. You know what I mean? You can't have this, and the bigger one, this uh, flower opening is a little bit bigger, and you don't want that outside the rim of your bowl. So that's called a uh, boil over no more. And here's one more trick. You can flip this over, this little uh, flower piece I like to call it, and now you can use this as a cover in your microwave. Let's say you're microwaving a plate of leftover something. Plop this on and that acts as a protector for your microwave. Especially great for households that, I don't know what it is, some households there's just no saran wrap, there's no napkins, there's no paper towels because the people in the house just throw the stuff in the microwave with no covering. And then usually the mom is the one left to clean up the mess. All right, so we're going to take two ingredients. We're gonna take caramel ice cream topping. Yes, I had this in my pantry. And we're going to mix it with a can of sweetened condensed milk. Again, you're welcome, I had it in my kitchen. So we're gonna put both of those in the small batter bowl and out those are gonna to pour together. Deliciousness, yes? Sweetened condensed milk is a, a sweetened milk product that's been cooked, shelf stable then. And now there's low fat in this uh, version, there's caramel, sometimes you can find a chocolate. All right, so these two mix together and we'll just take a spatula and we call these scrapers, yes? This is called a small mix and scraper. Oh my gosh, this looks heavenly. Mix this together. Um, small mix and scraper, skinny scraper. We've got six different sizes of scrapers. Do you have one? Make a comment below which scraper you've got. Do you have the classic? Do you have this small mix and scraper? Do you have this skinny scraper? I'd love to know which one you have and what you use it for or why you like it. I mean, I could tell you till I'm blue in the face why I love them. Um, I'll just tell you one thing, is that they're heat proof to 625 degrees, 650. They don't melt. So when I, you put this into a stir fry pan or pot of scrambled eggs or anything like that, it's not gonna melt. So make a comment about which of the scrapers that you like. Um, another thing about the scrapers is that they're going to be the guest special 
for purchases in February. So we're gonna talk in a minute about the February host special, but this is gonna be the guest special. We're gonna offer you some scrapers for free with a purchase. Um, the batter bowl, this is the small version, friends. This is a uh, four cup size. It's got ounces on it too. Um, it's also got liters on the other side. If you move to Canada, we got you covered. But I love this size bowl for small mixing jobs. I love the open handle. I love the pouring spout. So that's gonna get set aside. All right, so when, here's the game plan. When this cake comes out, oh my gosh, in three minutes and 50 seconds, we're gonna take and poke holes in it. That's what a poke cake is. Then we're going to pour this deliciousness in those holes. And then we're going to make yet one more topping. We're gonna to make a ganache to pour on the top of that. So for that, we're gonna use one of our silicone um, these are called silicone prep bowls, yes. Four cups, two cups, and then the little baby nestled in here is the one cup. So kind of like the three bears, there's always a perfect size. Why you'll love these is when you're melting chocolate and such, look, they flex and you can pour. These go right in the microwave. So we're going to take, for the ganache, a cup of chocolate chips. And so here's another one of my so time-saving uh, tips or like save yourself a trip to the store tricks. Ganache is typically made with heavy whipping cream, right? You use chocolate and heavy whipping cream. Um, but did you know that this Cool Whip will do the same thing? And I did not have any heavy whipping cream, so I couldn't do that. So I'm going to have to use some Cool Whip for this recipe. So it calls for uh, about eight ounces, right? So this is a 16 ounce container. Well, it's actually eight ounces, but it's the volume of it is, we're only gonna use half of this, okay? So we're gonna put that whip, that Cool Whip in here. And I know it sounds strange, but in, as soon as our cake is done, we're gonna pop this in the microwave and we're gonna melt the Cool Whip and the chocolate chips together, and that's gonna make a ganache. All right, there's that. Okay, a few seconds left on the cake. So the final thing that we're gonna put on this cake will be some pecans, or pecans, or however you pronounce it. So I've got some pecans in one of our prep bowls, and look, you don't have these? Get a set of six of these. Look, this is one cup. So for, for prepping things, for getting things ready, because they're called prep bowls, great. But I use these for making sugar-free jello, making pudding, um, storing leftovers, um, melting a little bit of butter if I want to in the microwave. There's a million uses for these. You get a set of six, and they're glass, and the lids. I just read a tip that said these are totally dishwasher safe, but some people's dishwashers have a pretty hot heat cycle, so if you were to ever find yourself with the lid not quite fitting perfectly, which mine do, but if you didn't, you would immediately, when you take that out of the dishwasher, you've got the nice hot lid, you immediately put it on your prep bowl and it'll reform it and it'll fit perfectly again. So if that, if you know anybody that has that problem or you do, that's your, that's your fix. So when you use the food chopper, you can chop right on a cutting board or you can chop in this little cap, which is what I'm gonna do. But a lot of my customers never remember this trick when you pour the food into this, the top part, this is huge. This is little puny dooney. You put it in the top, flip it over, and then you chop. And this you gotta give some good hard work to up and down, hard, 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 hard. Perfectly chopped nuts, friends, okay? That's the food chopper. If you don't have that, that's an old, old school product too. That's been around in our line for, oh my gosh, I bet you 20, 25 years, and it's had one redesign in all that time. We changed just a little bit of it, but look, onions, celery, pepper, candy, uh, graham crackers, nuts, the list goes on and on. All right. These are silicone mitts, okay? Grab the hot pan. And let's put the ganache right in there. Give that about a minute, see how that turns out. All right, let's make some room for the cake. Let's flip this over. All right, now, we 
we've been just frogging around here for what, nine minutes? This cake is done. So how many of you would love, love to be able to treat your family to something so delicious and it doesn't have to break the bank and it doesn't have to um, take a lot of your time? You know, you could go to the bakery and pick something up, spend time, spend gas, but you could get a few ingredients and try this at home. All right, I'm getting a chocolate uh, facial right now. It's delish. All right. It's not a good sign. It's not broken though, it's all good. All right, so here's our cake, all baked and done. So you're gonna choose some, some kind of tool that's got dowel-like so that you can make holes. So you're just gonna take and poke holes all the way around, probably about an inch apart, because we want all this yumminess to poke through the cake and not just pool up on the surface. So this is one of my small bamboo spoons. And you know, we may not even sell this one anymore, so you'll have to make do with what you can find in your kitchen. All right, this goes on the top. So when you're pouring something, on, you know, kind of a, uh, a delicate um, cake or something like this. This isn't necessarily de delicate, but I don't want to pour it right on. You kind of do this and it kind of diffuses it a little bit. And we're pouring and pouring and it's soaking in. And we're going to have a chocolate pecan caramel or, you know, poke cake. And just seconds flat. So we move some over here, move it all around. Yum yum. And you want to do this while the cake is warm too. All right, let's see how this is coming along. Okay, here's another great thing is that you can, you know, almost mix this up without even putting a spatula in there. Okay, so mixing and making our ganache. bring that all together. I almost had to use sugar-free chocolate chips. You know, Christmas was, you know, I made quite a few little snacks and things. I took things to, you know, my, the person who does my hair and the person who does my nails. So I was kind of baking quite a bit at Christmas time and I used up, I thought, all of my chocolate chips. And I have sugar-free chocolate chips, you know, that I use um, in, in some things, you know. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to use sugar-free. And then, saved by the bell, found yet one more bag of chocolate chips. But look at this delicious silky ganache so this by itself poured on this cake would be heavenly but with that poke layer in there i think we're in business here friends so let's say you had on hand or you could get at the store the um, heavy whipping cream and you would have used that for your ganache you would have used eight ounces buy a 16 ounce container of it and then use the other half to make homemade whipped cream and you would serve this with homemade whipped cream. Tonight, we're just gonna have it plain because I think this is gonna be enough. And this ganache is shiny and it spreads beautifully. All right, that's that. How about we put some pecans on the top? So just leave them in here like this and then just sprinkle them on top. And it called for a whole cup. I don't think we're going to even need all that many. Okay, good enough. Or if you would prefer, you could lay, you know, you could have used whole pecans on this. I like to use them chopped a little bit. Um, it, it makes the pecans go further for one thing, you know. But I'll just put a little, a couple of them in the middle. All right, can you see that? All right, so here's the true test the taste test. Hold on. So how exciting is this to be able to just dig right into the cake? Because you know what? It's just Jim and me. So I don't think he cares about my germs. Maybe he does. And if that's the case, then he just won't have any of this. But look. I'm going to get out. Oh my gosh, the cake is so moist. Then that caramel and sweet condensed mixture gives you a pop of moisture and flavor in the middle of the cake. 
talk among yourselves. And then we put that ganache on the top and some nut. It's heaven. It's heaven, it's heaven, it's heaven. I'm going to put that aside. Run to the store and get the ingredients. Better yet, you know what I'm going to ask you to do? Share the video, first of all. Let me know what scraper you use. That always helps me know. And number three, let's think about, do you have a rock crack? Do you need a rock crack? So for the first thing you can do is go to www.pamperedchef.biz forward slash Marna Ross. The sign fell. And you can purchase a rock crack. Second though, what would you say to letting me come and doing in February, I've got a um, Mardi Gras party theme that I just am developing. We made jambalaya at my meeting on Monday. We can make a bread pudding with a homemade rum sauce in the microwave. The jambalaya is in the microwave too. But look, in the month of February, so we're talking next month, do you want a rock crack? I'd love to help you get one. Do you have some of them and you need more of them? That rock crack retails for $139. It's worth every penny. But if you were to host a party in February with me, cooking class or catalog party, a 139 product, you know, if you went into Kohl's or let's say you went into, I don't know, whatever your favorite store is, Marshall's, and something was normally 139 it was on sale, what would you say would be a great sale price? 100 99 89 In the month of February with a qualifying show, which is $200, that rock crack our host will be getting for $55.60. Unheard of, right? Amazing deals. The two and a half quart, the little bit smaller baby sister to that, $47.60. These are deals that only come around very rarely. All right, and then I told you that the um, scrapers are going to be the guest special, and yes, they are. In the month of February, your guests when they spend 75, get to pick out that small mix and scraper, our regular mix and scraper, or the mini mix and scraper. Friends, the big one's worth $15.50. It's a great special. If you don't like the, Mar the Mardi Gras theme, then I have got appetizers and margaritas. I've got soups on. I've got um, a healthy cooking class. I've got a low carb class for the friends that want to do the same style eating that I do. I've got two different low carb classes that I can teach you. So. Last but not least, when you get a rock crack, 150 recipes come your way, right? So no more thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to use that rock crack for? Because you know what? Some people use it to make chocolate lava cake and chicken, and that's it. I want to tell you there are hundreds of things you can do with that rock crack, and I'd love to teach you more about those. So for tonight, I got to go because I have to get another taste of this cake. So I will post the recipe for you, but it's really pretty darn simple. Um, take care. Go over to my uh, Marna's Cooking. I've got a Marna's Kitchen page, and I've got In the Kitchen with Marna Ross, Executive Director. I've got two other pages. I usually, usually use this page, but I have some other pages you can take a look at too. So that's it for tonight. Happy Wednesday. Happy chocolate cake, and we'll see you real soon. Take care of you.